So we move on to the next talk by uh, Dr. Chandana Chakraborty, approach to a case of orbital inflammation. Uh, Dr. Chandana Chakraborty is a professor at the Regional Institute of Ophthalmology, Medical College, Kolkata. And uh, she is going to take us through approach to a case of orbital inflammation. All yours, Dr. Chakraborty. Uh, a very good afternoon, chairperson, moderator, my dear colleagues, and my dear students. So for the next few minutes, I'll be talking on approach to a case of orbital inflammation. So uh, I want an interactive session. So please participate. There are three images. What is the first image? Can I get an, uh, this thing? One, two, three. Anyone want to volunteer? What is the first? First image. Good, very good. This one. The second, first clue. Definitely, this is an orbital cellulitis, subperitoneal abscess. Ethmoidal sinusitis, maxillary sinusitis, breathing through in the orbital. Uh, Cellulitis. Next one, see what is this? A case of bilateral retinoblastoma. So uh, sometimes a patient can come to you, uh, a retinoblastoma patient, uh, with a picture of orbital cellulitis. This one? Uh, yes. True, you are. So this can be also this can also come because the age group is almost similar, uh, two to five years age group. All the three they can come with orbital cellulitis picture, and all these cases have been treated outside by uh, a course of broad spectrum antibiotics. So what you will ask for in case of orbital cellulitis, you have to find out. Where is the source of infection? The two tapses. So now, after giving the antibiotic proper, see the response, the patient is fine. So remember, in case of orbital cellulitis in pediatric age group, you don't have to, less than nine years age does not need any abscess drainage in most of the cases. The reverse is not true, that is in adult, you have to do the drainage. Another set of question. What are these? Of the age group, the, both these two, they are uh, nine years, 11 years, and three year girl. All of them can come to you as a picture of or by uh, inflammation. See, what is this? We draw uh, almost 10 cc of casea pass and the picture of the osteolytic lesion in the axial CT scan, the bone that means, and the other patient, see, look at the nodule. The S-shaped notch you have already seen in the case, and see, in this case, sorry, there was orbital venolymphatic malformation and sudden rupture giving an, I mean, a picture, chocolate cyst gives an appearance of proptosis with orbital cellulitis-like picture. So all types of uh, lesions can come to you with orbital inflammation, so you must keep in mind to differentiate uh, the diagnosis. So after the treatment with HET, this one came to be as a case of uh, tuberculosis osteomyelitis, the uh, next one, the middle one came as a case of tuberculosis bacteroidal adenitis, and the last one, we did aspiration and the, uh, with the uh, Kenacort Ken injection, and the patient is fine now. So we'll, uh, a bit about inflammation. Inflammation, an infective, it could be an infective condition, or it could be an 
uh, true inflammation. In case of infective condition, you can get an, uh, as I told, uh, the orbital cellulitis, or it, that is the bacterial infection, the parasitic infection, that is uh, a case of myosis disarcosis, or it could be a fungal infection, like a case of aspergillosis or mucormycosis. This classification comes from the Rootman. The Rootman classified inflammation, the non-specific inflammation of the orbit. Non-specific inflammation may be again specific or non-specific. Now, if we go to the non-specific classification, initially we used to call it as a pseudotumor. But nowadays, the term pseudotumor the, is actually becoming uh, it has become obliterated. Now we call it an idiopathic orbital inflammatory syndrome or non-specific orbital inflammatory disease. There are some examples. It could be uh, this uh, could be an uh, diffuse inflammation, or it could be an uh, localized inflammation. A localized IOIS can present with a case of like a case of dacryoadenitis. It can present an apical variety. It can involve the orbital apex or cavernous sinus, or it can involve a single muscle or multiple muscles. So these are the different variety. And you should remember also that this thing may be, may be combined also. So all these things may be combined also, or they can be. So now coming to this specific variety, as I told, the, as and we are diagnosing the case more and more, now the non-specific variety has come down, and the more and more we are diagnosing is, the specific has actually coming up. Now, what are the specific lesions? Look at this. It could be the most common is the, uh, this granulomatous variety, that is sarcoidosis. It could be Zogren syndrome, Kaimura's disease. Then CD, IgG4, orbitopathy, idiopathic sclerosing, inflammation, and granulomatosis with polyangitis. As you do more and more di uh, diagnostic tools you use, the laboratory investigations you use, you will uh, get more and more specific causes than the non-specific causes, that is the pseudotumor. These are the almost the similar age group. See, in the left hand, what is this? Looks like orbital cellulitis. Yes. Again, the sinuses are involved. What is this? Inferior rectus muscles are involved. What is this? Myocystisarcosis. And this you know, what is this? Thyroid eye disease. See the typical sign of the Coca-Cola sign, the thyroid eye disease. Most of the muscles are involved. So after getting treatment, see the wonderful response. All the patients have improved. In case of this patient, this abscess, the ENT people, they did the drainage of this abscess. And along, remember, in the, all these cases, in this particular case, you had to, uh, we have started using corticosteroid, both either systemic, uh, systemic corticosteroid, or um, either it could be in the IV form, uh, if you want to save the vision, or it could be in the oral form. Some more cases for you. Let's see what are these. All the cases are showing, see, the lead inflammation. All of the cases are showing lead inflammation. The upper one, see, this lady, this, she was treated as a case of orbital cellulitis, but no response. Again, the same picture. It is actually an dacryoadenitis. And the other one, bilateral dacryoadenitis. In the CT, how will you diagnose a case of dacryoadenitis? Because it could be a case of lymphoma also, bilateral lymphoma. So how you see, look at the picture. There is a, this uh, lesion, the enlarged uh, lacrimal gland, both the palpebral variety, palpebral part and the orbital part, there is a 
trailing lesion, trailing. It trails in the inside the orbit, not a very uh, specifically means well circumscribed lesion. This is another uh, patient, bilateral lacrimal gland in dacryoadenitis. Uh, in this, you can see the coronal view, the both the palpebral and the uh, orbital part is involved. The another uh, 25 years female, uh, hyper intense lesion in T1 CT, showing that uh, this is this is quite a long time the patient was suffering from this type of inflammation on and on. So there was sclerosing lesion. So after starting the steroid, look at the response. Within 48 hours, the patient responded. This was a came to be a case of Grogren syndrome, but the patient used to come to us uh, once a year almost. Each time we started these uh, anti-inflammatory uh, drugs, but Grogren syndrome usually we don't treat it. We don't like to treat the patient with the corticosteroid. Uh, we usually try to keep the patient on uh, uh, just symptomatic medication. This is the coronal view of the lacrimal gland. And look at this patient. This came to be a case of, so this is a non-specific dacryoadenitis. This is Grogren syndrome. This is non-specific orbital inflammatory disease. And this one a case was a very rare, though I'm showing this case. This is a case of Kaimura's disease, which came only after the histopathology. This is for you, the diagnosis. Both the patient came to us with an inflammatory picture, and both the patient received uh, corticosteroid outside. The CT is given to you. Anyone? Megha? What do you think? They received anti-inflammatory drug outside, and for the time being, both the patient was relieved after getting the corticosteroid. This is a clear-cut case of orbital lymphoma involving the inferior rectus muscle. And this one is a case of adenocarcinoma, adenocarcinoma lacrimal gland. So few things you have to keep in mind when you call it a... Uh, Look at the age of the patient. Look at the age. In a 75-year-old patient, whenever this age group is coming to you, always keep in mind that this could be a case of malignancy. You have to rule out malignancy. So lymphoma is a very common early seen patient cases which comes to you with a picture of inflammation. And believe me, these lymphoma, they can betray you because when you are putting the patient on corticosteroid, they rest, give a very good response, only to come back after a few months. So you have to keep in mind. And look at this uh, CT picture the, and the uh, uh, MRI picture. The lesion has almost gone. This is a lobular variety. These are some uh, one or two cases I will show you. 47 years male who came with uh, bilateral proptosis, uh, extracular muscle restricted movement, 11 investigations we did for tuberculosis, for sarcoidosis, everything came negative. So with oral prednisolone, the patient is quite uh, happy and he didn't come back to us. This is, uh, we diagnosed it as a case of IOID, idiopathic orbital inflammatory disease, on the basis of the clinical presentation and the CT picture, because look at the typical case. Many times you will, uh, you fail to diagnose clinically a thyroid eye disease and an uh, IOID case, myositis. Both of them will give you an inflammation of the um, muscle. But look at this muscle, the, both the tenons, the uh, muscles is quite irregular, and this is a nodular type of the swelling is seen. Another patient, this is the, uh, both the, oh, this patient came to us with the, when the patient uh, was already treated for almost five to six months outside uh, with the oral uh, corticosteroid, and then he came to us with a picture like this, PL negative, RAPD in the left eye, fundus with the disc edema, you can see, total ophthalmoplasia. And this was the CT picture, as you can see, there is a hyperintensification uh, in the MRI, the hyper, uh, it is going almost up to the orbital apex. 
So involving the superior orbital fissure and orbital apex will give you the uh, clue that it is a case of a total ophthalmopagia with optic nerve involvement. So, uh, but the patient improved with corticosteroid this time. But the vision we have lost just because we could not diagnose it before. So this is a case of, uh, you can, we call it commonly Tolosa Hunt syndrome, painful total ophthalmopagia. This is a patient which, uh, which I saw in the, uh, in my uh, clinical practice, the C bilateral, this is a uh, 40 years old lady. This is, a, I didn't do the diagnosis. The diagnosis was done outside, means uh, for 10 years the patient was suffering with granulomatosis with polyangitis, which we previously used to call it as Oesner's granulomatosis. So uh, look at the picture. The patient came with a vision of mild pain and there is a, a Sianka, Pianka, all are positive, high ESR. The patient improved with pulse steroid. Patient was already on rituximab. But when the patient developed this RAPD and vision finger counting, then you have to add on with the IV methylprednisolone on that. So this is a granulomatosis with polyangitis. Another case scenario. 18 year female came with bilateral uh, diffuse episcleritis like picture, bulging eye, PUK, peripheral ulcer case, and very bilateral diffuse orbital inflammation as you can see. Kidney function. We thought uh, this is also a case of granulomatosis with polyangitis, but as this was the first attack. There may not be, the, the response may not be positive. I Means Sianka, Pianka, they may be negative at the beginning only. In 30% of the cases only, they become positive. So maybe in future, the patient can turn up again with a full blown picture. Only thing you have to say the patient that uh, there may be a generalized involvement, that is the systemic involvement, like the kidney function and all this, you have to test. This is actually uh, the patient was diagnosed with the, came to us uh, admitted with the left eye orbital cellulitis like picture. And after one week, the patient came with a similar picture in the other eye. And the patient told that I had an attack of similar attack one year back. But there was minimum pain and the patient was not responding at all with the oral anti or systemic antibiotic. And see what was the picture, the lab investigation. The serum IgG was very high. So on benefit of doubt, we gave a diagnosis of IgG for orbitopathy. This is a new diagnosis. For last 10 years, this is coming more and more to us. IgG for orbitopathy. For this, you need biopsy, actually. We didn't do biopsy as the patient responded because uh, in, uh, biopsy of an orbital uh, muscle extracular muscles is not a very easy uh, thing. So if the patient responds well with the steroid, then you can leave it. Now, these are the patient, the orbital inflammation patient, they come to you with uh, this pain, bulging of the eyeball, photophobia, watering, redness, dimness of vision, double vision, color vision defect, if the orbital apex is involved, the swelling of the eyebeat and periorbital. Don't forget to examine the, the mouth because there may be a septic foci or the nasal bleed, there may be there my mucormycosis or the uh, sinusitis, the uh, post auricular lymphadenopathy. Don't forget to do a detailed examination. So to, uh, I, I think I have taken extra time now. I'll just finish it. The, do a good history taking. Don't forget to take the past medical history. The patient may not take out from his bag or ba bag the past medical history. Take out all the papers and ocular and systemic examination. Sometimes the patient may, be, it may be associated with uh, scleritis, episcleritis, all these things and the in iritis. So do a good examination and imaging. <laughs> yes, this is most of the cases. The imaging we prefer is the CT imaging because it gives you a picture of the uh, bony lesion also. But if you think that it is basically an orbital inflammation only, then you can go for the MRI also. Some of the patient we can do conservative plan. If in a case of idiopathic uh, orbital inflammatory disease, not that always we will do an 
uh, corticosteroid immediately. We can wait and watch because some of these mild cases, they can spontaneously resolve. And then medical treatment, like in the form of the steroid, as I told, corticosteroid, either oral or corticosteroid, intrapulse steroid, or even you can give an intralesional injection if, the, if there is a uh, tumor-like lesion or vital inflammation, you can give that. Monitoring the disease course is very important. Tell the patient that you can have it in future also. So please come for the follow-up. Then surgery, if we cannot do the diagnosis, sometimes we, you have, may have to go for an incisional or excisional biopsy. HP, the immunohistochemistry, they are very helpful. Then if it, any of this uh, treatment plan does not, sometimes you may have to go for an radiotherapy, low dose radiotherapy in a case of non-specific or vital inflammatory disease is very helpful sometimes. So lab investigations, don't go for, give the patient a long list of investigations. First, do your clinical ex investigation, uh, diagnosis, provisional diagnosis, CT, and then you ask the patient to go for all these investigations, CRP, ESR, a hemogram. Sometimes a child can come to you with acute myeloid leukemia with a picture of uh, uh, inflammation. So do a, especially in the pediatric is good, do a good hemogram and CRP, ESR, they may be high in infection, thyroid profile because all the, on, among the orbital diseases, 60% of the cases of the orbital diseases are a thyroid profile you should do. Infectious foci, ANCA, PIANCA, ANA, CERAM AC to rule out sarcoidosis, though it is a bit rare in uh, Indian subcontinent. Then IgG4 orbitopathy, don't forget to do IgG uh, for the blood. This is already, I told, the treatment plan, the antimicrobials, corticosteroid, biologics. These are the, and rituximab is a very good armamentarium uh, in our armamentarium, rituximab, methotrexate, cyclophosphate, they have got a lot of complications, but rituximab is a better drug I, uh, which we are getting the response. So changes in visual acuity, these are the red flags. And remember that uh, orbital uh, orbit is actually a Pandora's box. Anything can come out finally. Uh, so uh, keep a good rapport with uh, all the multi-speciality department and your friends. So these are my differences. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much, uh, Dr. Chakraborty. I've taken, that was I think I think I've surpassed the time. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <extreme> <laughs> right. I think that was a very interesting.